here we are. Looks like our microphone is working, more or less. Okay. Here's our old friend, the Edward Spitfire. You can see the uh, the painting on this has not ne gone nearly as well as I'd hoped. It's um, this has been a disappointment. The undersurface looks great, <laughs> but I forgot to turn on the camera while I was painting that. So you can just pretend I sprayed this if you want to. I don't care. Your life, your business. All right. You may be wondering what I can do to possibly uh, fix this. I don't know. Don't care. What I'm going to do right now, however, is going to make everything look very groovy. Can you guess what it is? Who do I sound like right now? I don't know. It's kind of freaking me out, though. Ataka RAF Midstone. This paint is miserable. My biggest problem was this paint. And that's the problem with the Hataka paint in general. Oh, man. It just, you know, some of it's great and some of it's terrible. And I've got a uh, story I could tell you about that azure blue. Unbelievable. What we're going to do today is called stippling. And it's going to make the camouflage look cool. To help with this process, I borrowed something from our friends in the um, Need to Get Out More community. We've got... <laughs> oh my god! Oh, the outrage! Uh, this is called a wet palette, and this is not the best one in the world. But uh, what you do is you get this piece of uh, paper, special paper, and this is a special sponge. And it's full of water, as you can tell if you, you know, paying attention. You put the uh, special paper down on there. I'm going to use a palette knife to kind of smooth this out some. The uh, water goes up through the paper. And like some kind of space-age diaper, the water kind of goes one way but not the other. And uh, I know a lot about diapers lately because my dog, let's just say, you know what I'm saying, the diaper time. And uh, you may find out about the dog when she starts whining here because I think it's pretty close to her dinner time. This palette keeps the paint from drying out, and for this Hataka paint, that is a very big deal because this Hataka paint dries at the speed of light, especially this miserable midstone color. And I don't know if you're really all that you know, concerned, but the biggest problem I've had painting this Spitfire has been trying to. Uh, just I've been I've just been learning some basic lessons. Now the lighting's moving around here, not because of uh, uh, I'm filming a Hollywood epic. Because I've got a light on my uh, head, I've got a a light that allows me to see what I'm doing. I'm old. I need light to see. Gatorex. So y'all just gonna have to put up with that about that. That's right. I'm sympathetic. I'm sympathetic to everyone. Plants, little animals, except my dog. All kinds of cool stuff. Now I'm just going to put some of this paint on this palette. It's not going to take very much. Just a little bit. And uh, I'm going to use this paint, such as it is, to do the stippling which is going to make this edge kind of blurred. 
Uh oh. Look at that. I'm still. What's the word? What's the word for this, kids? Yeah, lucky. Bat in a thousand. Okay. Then the, the next thing I've got to do is get a, a brush. To stipple with. Now, what are the what's the prime directive? What's rule number one? Your paint job is only going to be as good as your paint and your brush. Your paint and your brush decide what you what's going on. And then your technique, but mostly, it's the quality, the characteristics of the paint, and the brush. Now we got our paint laid out here on our wet palette, so it won't dry within the next ten seconds. It's a miracle with this stuff. And now what we've got here is a good old humbrol. Humbrol palpo, whatever that is. It's a number four. I bought these brushes for reasons that escape me right now. <laughs> but they're horrible. They're horrible. I don't know what kind of unfortunate cutie wooty red sable was sacrificed to make these brushes. But I'll bet it was cute. <laughs> babies <laughs> now I had to work on this quite a bit I, I've done a lot of modification to make this into a uh, let's let's just just totally get up in there okay all right what's happening here now we're talking there we go the brush bristles had to be cut off and kind of shaved to make this number four red sable brush. You can see the little bit of uh, remnants of old paint in there. Yeah, that's my style. Don't mess it up. Yeah, this was cut down from a really a brand new brush. To this little tiny stub okay okay Let's see what happens when I bring this bring this in there all right we got some we got some more or less going on feel free feel free to throw th throw things I you know not break it you're not breaking my heart all right let's get the uh, get this thing out here this little guy here there's one missing ingredient in the whole picture this what is it this is a uh, a hard plastic dry palette and I'm going to be just I'm just going to pitter pat away on this with the brush pittering and pattering until it looks right. And I'm going to transfer my activities to the airplane model. And I'm going to put some stippling on there. And you're going to get to watch this whole thing. But I'm not going to say a word from here on in. Unless it's being spoken by my dear friend, VoiceOver Dan. VoiceOver Dan may, may jump in here. So, arrivederci. Greetings, this is VoiceOver Dan. As you can tell, I sound much more professional, mature, and serious. Now, what I'm hoping for here is that you will actually be able to learn to do this by watching my example here. I'm not sure if that's at all clear <laughs> that I'm trying to do that. This is teaching. I'm trying to teach. Uh, <clears throat> what I'm hoping is that you can kind of pick up the basic idea by watching this uh, somewhat primitive video and just get the idea of it. And then uh, pick it up from there. Go on to do better than I ever could. Carry on my legacy and bring my message to the world. Now, this, this stippling is not, 
is not something I've done in a while. I'm, I'm definitely out of practice, but a lot depends on the kind of paint you have. If the paint dries slowly, it works better. If the paint dries super fast, as this does, then this wet palette can come to your rescue, but it does make things more challenging in some ways. Um, each and every case is different. Each and every model is different. So it's really a matter of the individual coming to a, a point in the process where they get into what we used to call the zone. Now, a lot of people made fun of the zone, and that's because of the worldwide conspiracy to turn you into a mindless worker drone, <clears throat> among other things. That and uh, fluoride in your toothpaste. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, okay, take another big hit of uh, fluoride, and uh, what you're going to notice here is that I have to go over this several times. And I'm looking at it, I'm thinking about what I'm doing, I'm putting the, the paint on there. I'm going to stand back, take a look at it, and then I'm going to think, okay, it needs this, it needs that. And I'll just add a little bit more here, and then I'll add a little bit here. You may be able to sense a certain lack of, uh, I don't know, passion about this particular model. These Edward kits do not thrill me. They, they, they just, uh, they don't. And uh, this paint is not thrilling me either. Um, <laughs> really, uh, what's the word? I think there's a phrase that describes this. As we used to say back on the farm, I really stepped in it. So, um, building this kit has been an exercise in, uh, in high stepping. Now, I can't always get the camera focused, but I did a remarkably good job here of getting at least to the point where you can kind of see what I'm trying to attempt. And, of course, the overall goal here is to make this look like, from a distance of a foot or two away, that the original paint was sprayed on with a spray gun by some unfortunate crew ground crewman who's out there in the broiling sun spraying on this paint. And that's kind of what actually happens. This camouflage pattern, it's unusual. It certainly isn't the standard um, RAF pattern. This is an oddball. And uh, getting the colors on there was a challenge. I, I'm not going to entirely blame the paint. Because what you missed out on when I stupidly failed to uh, click that start recording button, uh, when I painted the undersurface was uh, with the azure blue, uh, you missed out on my actually doing the brushwork at full speed. Now, I could go on and on about this particular problem, but in general, some tasks cannot be taught in slow motion. But we have a cultural bias that tells us that we should teach slow and then get, you know, get up to speed. I understand that. You teach simple things and then you build from there. I get that. But sometimes it just isn't possible to do something slowly and do it right. The brush speed when I'm painting is fast. In fact, it's when I first saw myself do it on a video, uh, I looked like I was just really slopping it on. I mean, it was it's shockingly fast. The brush moves very quickly. And the reason it has to move that quickly is that the paint is just not going to behave if you don't. So you have to have the skill to be able to put that paint on there fast. Now, there are alternative ways of doing this. This is my method. There are alternative ways. And they involve taking a stiff little brush and some thick little paint and just 
smearing it on there with the brush. And that's fine. If that works for you, that's great. I can't get that to work. I don't do it that way. I take the very, very thin paint, a small little camel hair brush, and I basically finesse it onto the surface of the model. But it has to be done fast. What happened with that wing there that you see the awful brush marks? <laughs> you can see them. Look at that. Oh. oh, the pain. The pain. I did that way too slowly. And this gives the paint an opportunity to do what it loves to do. Dry it just enough to goof things up before I get a chance to smooth it out. Now, I don't recommend smoothing paint out in general. What I'm inclined to do, though, is give it a couple of quick brushes, quick brush strokes, serving the purpose of smoothing it out. But it's part of a process that really, I think, has to be seen. Now, uh, I digress. Uh, we're looking at a video right here that also shows something that has to be seen. You can see that with my little short bristle stipple brush, which I made, okay, I want to make sure that's clear, I created this brush. You go in there with it having a tiny bit of paint on there, and you remove the excess paint by, you know, pity, pitter patting it against the palette or whatever you have handy. Hopefully not your hand. Oh my God. But if you must, you know, if you dig that, you know, I ain't going to stop you. But uh, whatever you want to put that on there with, you can even do it on the surface of the model like I just did there. I know it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's not exactly, uh, it's not exactly delicate. But you want to take that tiny little brush and you want to get it to the point where it's, it has some paint on it, but it doesn't have too much. But it has enough. And then you put it on there at that point. Now you may think to yourself, that's going to create a problem. That's going to create a problem because while you're stippling away, <laughs> paint's going to dry on the brush. You're going to have problems. True. <laughs> Absolutely true. You have to constantly go back to the paint, reorganize, regroup, like I'm doing here. Check to see if you have the paint the right... Oh, and don't do that. Check to see if the paint is, is at the right consistency on the brush. And this you do this over and over and over and over again. It's a tedious process that requires a certain amount of patience as well as dexterity. Now, I've discovered something, that whenever I recommend that one do something that involves patience and dexterity, I alienate 80% of my audience, which is sad. <laughs> but patience and dexterity, I always thought that was model building. I thought that was what you did. It's like, what do you do? Well, I did something, yeah, it's patience and dexterity, it's model building. But for a lot of people, it's just basically to just rip it off, slam it in, get that airbrush going, put on those headphones, listen to Thin Lizzy, go crazy. That used to be my style, but I enjoy this more now. I like doing this more. And I get a kick out of making it work because it's, it's just so darn subversive. Now, I'm just going to do this one wing. This one wing definitely demonstrates just kind of everything that went wrong. But then as, the, uh, as we get on towards the end here, I'll, uh, I'll do a quick edit and tag on what the model looks like when all is said and done. When all the stippling has been done, I'll demonstrate what that looks like. And it, it looks remarkably like it was sprayed. <laughs> You can do this to the point where it's just a little subtle, tiny bit of feathering, it's called. Or you can do major, major, major super feathering, which looks like, you know, well, you went after it with some, uh, you know, 
inexpensive airbrush with the, the air turned up high. That's possible. You can do the, all that with a brush. Just depends on what kind of stippling brush you have, how much patience you have, and what you're willing to do. When you get this done, and I'm going to call this good right here. When you get this done, you're going to end up with something that looks <laughs> pretty darn good from a foot away. Now, those are the little marks that you'll see in your palette where I just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really removing paint from the brush doing that. So the paint on the wet palette is going to be, uh, it's going to actually get thinner. Okay, now we're going to see the model as it turned out in the end. From this distance, I think it looks all right. As a demonstrator, I don't think it looks too bad. As a demonstrator of this Edward kit and that Hataka paint.